So give yourselves a woo. Woo! Oh, y'all are good. But, but you gotta, you gotta get the hands going too. So okay, will you do it again? Okay, one, two, three. Woo! All right, good morning. So, woo, everybody. Woo. <laughs> good morning. That is one of the most good fun morning. things when you when you're in live situations, you know, in person and everybody does that. It's just so fun. It's like it lets everybody's inhibitions go. They they don't have to like sit still anymore. Now they they're free to do whatever they want. So, it's really fun. So, how are you ladies doing today? Very good. How about you? Fantastic. Yeah, We're so glad to have you back. We missed you the last couple of weeks. Thank you. I missed you guys too. I've been busy. So, yeah, like what? What have you been doing? Well, you um, my- <laughs> I'm sorry. You cut out there. What? I said, what are you doing out there eating bonbons? <laughs> yes, you know how I am. I just, I just am always relaxed on the lounger in the sun. <laughs> the, ca- the couch in the back, listening to her. Yeah. Yes, the chase. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, let's see. I went on a little hmm. mini trip um, for a di- for for a day, which was fun. Um, that was last week, and then I've just been super busy with um, this community garden I've been working on. It's an acre, and uh, just trying to keep things alive because we went from fall rain to middle of summer. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah, so just trying to to get like our tomato plants, for example, were totally waterlogged. I thought we would lose all of them, and they're starting to come back. So you know, I'm doing a little extra care, so that takes extra time because you, you know, yeah. instead of two plants, I have twenty. So, <laughs> so, so yeah, that is, that's a lot. It's like I can't even imagine an acre. So, do you have other people that help you? Is it community and the community helps? Um, it's community from the church that I'm a part of and yeah, they, people come and go and, um, I'm, pr- I'm, you know, the most consistent because I'm the one that's running it. And I'm also, I try to be there every day to just kind of, you know, because it's, it's never ending work <laughs> in order to keep it. Going. So, but, but we're excited. We, we planted, I mean, for example, we planted, uh, let's see, we planted pumpkins, watermelon, cantaloupe. I'm getting ready to put in acorn squash. We've got beans. We've got cucumbers, pickling cucumbers, tomatoes, eggplant, uh, okra. What else do we have? Pak choy. Wow. Um, we, we did radishes, but those are, th- those are through. Uh, potatoes. I mean, you know, anything you can think of. And sunflowers and amaranth. I had to put in amaranth. I've grown that before, and that's, that's a fun plant to watch grow. It gets about that's six. The first, yeah, Sorry, go ahead. That's, I'm, I'm planning that the first time this year. Amaranth. Are you? Yeah, it's mm-hmm. it's a, it's really great. You amaranth, um, Delinda, I don't know if you're familiar. I was going to ask you, what is that? I don't know what it is. It's it's a it's a big plant. It looks like a weed, actually, to me. It looks like a weed. But um, I, I picked a golden amaranth this year, and it the plumes on it are all seeds. That, um, and it looks like... I, I, how would you describe it, Lisa? It's 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 hard to describe. Oh, if you know what quinoa is, it's bright colored quinoa flowers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, the the flower heads have thousands of seeds. When you when you take the flower heads off, you can either eat the seeds like um, quinoa, or you can grind it up like a flower. So it's it's really cool. So I've got. I've got a 16 foot long row. I don't know how many I have, probably 25 plants. So they're doing good. They're about knee high right now. So that's cool. Yeah. So you grow those so that you can eat the seeds. So, I mean, that's the point of the flower, but is it, and it's pretty, it's a pretty flower. It's pretty, it'll attract, you know, I'm kind of using it as like they say a pollinator. I'm, you know, if we ever get there, it'll, uh, It'll attract the bees <laughs> if we get there. And it, I mean, it, it also, um, it's like beans. It brings uh, nitrogen back yes. into the ground a little bit and uh, it can be protective. So I'm using the four sister method. That's why I'm using it. So. Okay. Yep. Yep. So super excited. And, and uh, you guys we, are we, so all, amazing. 
We also have sunflower. <laughs> so you guys are just so amazing. It's like what? It's so cool. Well, we like to. I guess we like to experiment and try things. You know. Yeah. So, yeah. And well, it's fairly easy. So. Well, and but like we say, have it does care, take Karen here. Yep. <clears throat> it takes a little here. bit. Yeah, we got a little bit of something something going on. Yeah, we've there. got a delay going on. There's a delay on my end, yeah. so I don't know. So yeah, let's see. We have anybody saying good morning? There's Miss Karen. Karen, did you use your Starbucks? I sent uh, I sent out our winners from last month. Got their Starbucks gift certificates. So um, have you had a chance to use yours? <laughs> She's supposed uh, to take me out for coffee. I think that's what I heard. <laughs> oh, that must be what it is then, right? <laughs> That's why she's waiting. <laughs> That's cool. Well, and what's so cool is that actually y'all could actually do that right there in the same town. So makes it really, really nice. All right. Well, you know, our word today, Lisa picked the word today. So Lisa, you can start us out since you picked the word. And why did you pick it? The word is possibility. I because it. I like endless possibility. <laughs> How our possibility can mean all kinds of things. Like? I don't know. Um, well, to me, possibility means not being stuck. Mm -hmm. so, that's like sometimes that's when people are stuck. They, it's kind of like, Oftentimes, people don't think they have a choice. It's only because yeah. they just can't see the other choice. And I think mm -hmm. that's the way it is with possibilities, too. It's like, well, you know, if, if you're kind of in that that zone of uh, frustrated or defeated or that negative place, sometimes it's like, oh, I don't I don't have any possibilities. I don't have any choices. And yet they're always they're always there. We just have to sometimes search for right. them or reach out and find somebody who all, the, you know that is a, a full of possibility person and say, you know, I can't see any possibilities here. You know, what what could I do? So well, I think and possibility is the plus to failure's negative. You know, it you, you never fail because there's always possibilities. Um, right. My breath. My brother calls me the energizer bunny, but it really doesn't have to do with energy. It has to do with the fact that I never think there's ever no possibility left. There's always a possibility left, especially with God. <laughs> well, absolutely. When when we when we have God on our side, it is always mm -hmm. unlimited <laughs> possibilities. Um, because when we're looking at him, he it enables us to find other doors, other little windows, other little mm -hmm. possibilities, things, even if it's small, just having that hope and knowing, well, there are other, you know, and, and I kind of i will go back to the choices thing. Cause I think they kind of go hand in hand. It's just realizing there is something more and the father has more for us. If we're just open for it, if we'll kind of, get out of the funk and raise our head a little bit. And maybe that's the point. Let's raise our head, you know, look up instead of that looking down. Cause the more we look down, the less we see. I mean, just physically, if you think of that, just on a physical mm -hmm. thing, the more you're looking down, your, your view gets so much more narrow. Whereas when you're looking up, you know, your whole countenance, everything lifts up and there are where we find the possibilities. Well, you, you just said basically what I was going to say with, you know, we focus on God. Um, even even if we're in a, a time of there's nothing happening and we don't think there's anything going to happen or we're stuck or whatever that means, if we change the focus off of ourselves and look to him, you know, he may just want us to go step by step at the moment. Um, he always has our best interest in mind. Um, you know, there's always a blessing, even in sitting and, and waiting, both for some of us, you know, sitting and waiting can be hard. Yeah. I'd say for most of us, that is, that's the hardest part. I've always said, I hate limbo. Maybe that should be a word. <laughs> but that place when you know, when you know, there's something else coming and you know, there's, you know, that some doors are getting ready, you know, to open. 
uh, for those possibilities. But being in that limbo place of just waiting and not knowing for sure which way you're going, that's my least favorite place to be. Well, and I, and I think sometimes when people get stuck or don't think they have a possibility, they might be, you know, looking around at thinking everybody else is having things happen and blah, blah, blah. But we forget that person had to go through whatever to get to where they're at. And they're on a different, you know, they're on a different journey, of course. Um, mm -hmm. Who knows? You know, and like what you were saying, Lisa, with um, possibility being the opposite of failure, um, you know, I always, I always talk about success is not necessarily ignoring quote unquote failure is getting up, getting up again, you know, mm -hmm. so maybe even that possibility piece is that mindset of, okay, so this didn't work. So let me look around. What are my choices? What are the possibilities and get up and just yeah. keep moving? Well, <laughs> you know, like when the, the Red Sea part, I always look backwards on that and try and imagine myself before the Red Sea and not knowing that the Red Sea was going to part they didn't know the possibility of the Red Sea parting. I'm, I'm pretty sure that wasn't like in everybody's mind. Oh, well, now God's going to part the Red Sea. Um, they were, they, they, most of them were murmuring that they were up against the mountains and that the Pharaoh was coming with his 900 billion chariots to kill them. And um, it didn't look like there were any possibilities. It, it, it looked very bleak. <laughs> And, um, well, and yeah, so sometimes we're, we're in those situations, but how cool is it that God has all this? He's like a, a, a very creative person, <laughs> and so he's got all these little tools in his hands. So the possibilities are just infinite. Um, obviously, the Red Sea uh, was quite the finesse move, you know. <laughs> well, and, oh, and, it, and it seemed he also waited till the last minute. Sometimes you have to yeah. wait a while. Until it gets really bad. <laughs> He's letting them sweat. <laughs> yeah. wow. That is a great example. That just, um, because when they, like I said, when they had Pharaoh and all uh, the chariots and all that coming at them from one way and the, the Red Sea there, I am sure there was not one person who thought, oh man, you know, God's going to do a miracle. Did they even think that? Because, from what scripture says, they whined and complained all the time. They they yeah. just, that just was the market. And, you know, I guess we do that same thing. You know, it's not like they were the only ones, but um, that would have been hard to see another possibility. And I think, yeah. so when we get there, maybe that, maybe that's how we can incorporate them and say, okay, so Lord, I'm kind of up against the Red Sea here. So whatever you want to do to part it, and give me a new possibility, you know? Well, and the terrible thing about the Red Sea is the, the place where they were was also blocked off by, like, they're up against the Red Sea, but on either side of them was also a uh, cliffside mountain. So, because oh. we, the, you know, they mentioned where they, basically, some of the basic places they were. And so they had, there was no out. And, th and that's the way life sometimes seems. And yet, that's why I love the word possibility because there's always possibility. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that key, like you were talking about Laura of um, uh, not looking in our own power, we, there may not be any possibilities, but when we take it off of us and put it, put it on God, like, okay, Lord, you're, you are the creative one. You are the, the master. You're full of possibilities. So you know, I'm ready to take whatever possibility you have. And I think it changed even by saying the words when you're in that place takes you out of that, that stuck place. And just, it, it begins, it then ignites that hope in that, um, uh, just that fire of, yes, there are more possibilities. I can't see them, but I know they're there. That living in trust, that living in faith that God's got more. You know, well, it's it's just like the, the parking lot thing that you're always talking about. You're always saying that, you know, you look for a, a parking spot up front because you expect it to be there. And to me, that's that power of possibility. Yeah, it, it really is. That, and that is, it, sometimes I still <laughs> just get shocked. I don't know why, I mean, because for the last, it's got to be at least 20 years that I've known now that that's what God does. In my little, in my world, that little thing, 
Yeah. It's so fascinating to me. And again, I'll pull up and say, Lord, I don't know why. I do I don't know what I do to deserve this. I I don't, but thank you so much because I sure appreciate it anyway. You know, and just I expect it because he's so faithful that he brings it to me all the time. Why wouldn't I expect it? So when it doesn't happen on the very few occasions, then it's like, well, Lord, I either got here a little early or somebody else really needed that parking place, you know. Um, <laughs> well, so and I, I also, you, oh, sorry, okay. go ahead. Um, no, no, I, also, go. I also think um, when you talk about possibility, how much of our expectations and the stories in our head, you know, tie into that. Um, and I, you, I'm, I'm drawing, I'm fine line on the expectation because, you know, focusing on God, our expectation is he has our best interest in mind. So that's where you can put your expectation, but you know, the expectation that, you know, I want, I've, I've worked this hard for this long and this should happen and that should happen. And, you know, I should be doing this and I should, it should look this way and blah, blah, blah. You know, that's an expectation or a story in your head. Um, I think those also tie into that piece. And a lot of times you get sidetracked and forget about the possibilities. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think, and um, I know a lot of people, um, you know, it's like, well, no, you don't want to do the name it and claim it. And that is not at all what we're talking about. You know, name it and claim it as if we, as if we do deserve, okay, deserve what we get. The truth is we don't, we are imperfect and it's only God in us that, that it is. But when we watch his faithfulness, and I think this is where it's important to look at our lives and go back and kind of see those times when you felt like you didn't have a choice, where you felt like you didn't have a possibility and God came through. So I think then we can expect his faithfulness because he will always be faithful and he always will love us. So expecting the good gifts from our father. That's where I think the expectation is not that he's going to give us everything that we want in life. You know, okay. You know, Lord, I really would like a new car and not that he might not even, he may want you to have that as well, whatever those things are, but it's, it's kind of a different, it's, um, you know, when you're trying to compare it, because I have people say, but yeah, but the Lord, I don't believe in name it and claim it. No, neither do I, but I believe in God wanting the best for us. You know, and right. having, like you said, having our having our best interest at mind. And sometimes I, it's when we expect it and sometimes not. Go ahead, Lisa. I think name it and claim it has to do with that parent-child relationship. Um, you know, he talks about the fact that he can give us what we ask for. I and mean, he says, you know, I can give good gifts. But a parent does what's good for their child. I mean, my kids always ask for cookies at midnight. I mean, sometimes we did and sometimes we didn't, <laughs> you know. Um, if, but so the thing is, is that, you know, that child parent relationship, he's always doing what's good for us. Sometimes what we ask isn't as, you know, good for ourselves. I, I also came upon a little mini sermonette actually yesterday, last night, where the preacher was talking about, God will give us blessings if we're obedient. And you're like, ooh, <laughs> ooh that, that kind of hit a little hard. <laughs> yeah. You know, so oh, he, I, he was, sorry, go ahead. No, no, go for it. I was going to say he was doing the, you know, examine thyself and, and see where you are at. And, yeah. well, and, and there have been plenty of times I've prayed for something or asked for something, and I'm really glad in retrospect God didn't give it to me. There's those too, those possibilities that didn't happen that I'm really grateful because I was, you know, not thinking properly. It wasn't good. Yeah. And then I think that, yeah, I think that's true. And that because in those, in those times, he opened up new opportunities instead of the one we were looking for. He had his own opportunities out there for us and, well, um, and most of the time they were bigger and better than what I was imagining anyway. So. Yep. And y'all know, I love that description. I think, oh, let me see. Uh, John 10, 14. I may not have it right. Where he says, you know, um, that we, we, he can give us more than we can think or imagine. And it's like, okay, Lord, I, I can imagine pretty big things, but I'm going to go with you, <laughs> you know, he wants to give us, he, the thing is because of his love for us, just like our love for our kids, he does it 
uh, based on what's good for us, but he wants to be the, the giver. He wants to give us more. And when we're obedient, like you say, Laura, um, and when we're walking those paths, sometimes he just gives us little kind of like these little gifts from heaven when we're so unexpecting something and it happens and you're like, Oh, wow, Lord, you are so good. Like, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I think it really the, the part of gratitude being open for what he has for us and then being really grateful because again, I think that really opens up. It, 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 I'm going to back to our great word today, more possibilities. The more grateful we are, the more aware and paying attention of the gifts that God does give us, opens up even more opportunities because he's so not selfish, you know. But, and I, I have a little story that reminds me of a, uh, a story. A story we um, yeah. 20 years ago, my husband, uh, we had moved to the Chicagoland area with a job and he lost it in six months. They laid everybody off. Well, he couldn't find a job for two years and we felt stuck <laughs> like. Bet. We, he tried and couldn't. It was right around 9-11. Um, um, things were kind of in a shambles um, job-wise in that area. For example, he went to a job when they still did, you know, job stuff in person, stood in line for an hour and a half. There were 325 people in front of him. Wow. When he got to the front of the line, he had 30 seconds to pitch his pitch and hand the resume over. I mean, it was that, you know, wow. so... We, we wanted to move back to Kansas City. It just didn't look like anything was going to ever happen. We tried to sell our house and the deal fell through. I mean, all of these little things. And we, mm -hmm. I was working four part-time jobs. He couldn't, he couldn't find anything. So he was doing Mr. Mom. You know, it was all of this stuff. When everything fell together, when God put everything together, within one week, we sold the house. He got a new job back here in Kansas City. We came down here for a weekend. We were able to buy a house. To me, that's like the miracle because he was making nothing for two years. And they, you know, we, we got financing. We were able to buy a house. You know, the possibilities popped up. But it, when we were in that mire of, is this ever, we knew it was going to end, but it was just like, you know, we felt like we were raked over the coals. It was painful financially, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, you go, you go into a job loss for that long. It's, it's rough, but you know, but, but God, um, okay. <laughs> you know, and he, he, and maybe the whole purpose in that was, so I would remember, you know, look, I, I came through for you guys. Um, and look, you, you, we've lived here for 20 plus years. Um, and we were able to have a house and all of those kinds of things, which we thought were impossible. Yeah, I bet after two years of no job, you probably were pretty shocked that you were able to, to yeah. get along and buy a house. Yeah, wow, that's but, awesome. But, but only God. I mean, only he could have done that, you know, the yeah. possibility. So that's awesome. Yeah. Well, and and so I have a question to everybody. What holds us back from entering the possibilities that we have? I Because I feel like a lot of times we're holding ourselves back from possibilities more than we're um it, than otherwise, it, you know, like we we give up or we kind of go down roads because we don't even explore things. So, why why do you think that we give up on possibility? Yeah, I'd love to see what some of our our people say to us this morning. And good morning, everybody. Several of y'all are still showing up as Facebook users, so that way you might want to tell us who you are. But uh, some great great comments today. Um, you know, I think um, I think we're just looking too much inward of what can I do, what can I do, what can I do, as opposed to what can God do, what can God do, what can God do. And sometimes yeah, we, good point. we can't even think of what God can do. But I think it's that it really is about trust and just trusting that he will be faithful like in those two years. I'm sure, Lori, there were times you were saying, boy, you know, we're kind of getting at the end of our rope here, Lord. You know, how much longer is this going to last? And just, no, but you knew at the end, when whenever that came, that he would have it all available, you know, to us. Because he is um, so faithful to us. I, I think, you know, to answer your question, Lisa, too, I think sometimes people get fearful. Mm. Um, That's a good um, point. Laziness, you know, oh, I've done that and I don't want to. You know, it, it's that, you know, uh, 
I think it's Kathy Weaver says she's a, she's been a success in 14 years overnight, or I can never remember, of course. She needs to, I can never remember the way she says it, but, you know, she's an overnight sex, success at 14 years. You know, people forget <laughs> it work and time, you know, um, and commitment um, to get to wherever you're going. But, yeah, I, I wonder how much of the fear piece plays into that, uh, whether people are aware that they're fearful or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you bring up a good point with the patients thing. I tell you, I I talk more to people in my coaching about um, patients. <laughs> As you guys know, I did the author marketing coaching and, and still have some clients on that. And that they, I would get them in there and they're like, it's been two weeks. <laughs> you know? And I haven't seen, you know, this happen. And I'm like, oh my goodness, girl, you know, it's, it's actually two years or three years of, of doing all this work that it's going to take before you're going to see most of the stuff. Um, Kathy put, I am an overnight success and it only took 14 years. I love that. There it is. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Lisa, you want to read um, what Vicki said? She said, good morning. It's Vicki. Are we good at there? So it says, good morning, it's Vicki. I think we have been, have to be very intentional, even with God, know his intentions will be what you need. Look for signs, good and bad in every situation and give it to him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I think, I do think the uh, that that's a good word that she used in there is intentional, which is basically, we're all saying that, but we don't know that we've used that word, but uh, being intentional about, um, and uh, when we're when we're looking to God for for the answers and for the possibilities and to really be aware, I just think sometimes we go through and and, and I know I've certainly been this way. Um, I, I'm I'm much more aware now than I was in my 20s and 30s. Um, you know, and maybe that's because that's when you know I was raising my kids and all I could do is just look at what was happening around me. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but I think when we really are paying attention to the miracles that, that God has around us every day, and, and yes, there's the ones of how beautiful the earth is and appreciating, you know, I, I love flowers and things, but watching how God is working around us because he is always at work. And, and I think I've shared that the story, the um, study that I did of um, Henry Blackaby uh, on experiencing God, and he talked about that. That when you are really paying attention, like even in your church or in organizations, and you just can see how God is working, then join God where he's already working instead of trying to get him to come do what you want him to do. Because he's <laughs> you, those are possibilities. He's showing you the way. But sometimes we just, I don't know, we just don't pay attention. And it, it's sometimes yeah. right there in front of us. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Well, I think. I think positive possibility thinking is also a way of getting, you know, one of the funny things is the mind is very good at um, when we program it at saying you're right. So if you're saying there's no possibilities, the brain will help you can, you know, make that correct. Well, and you you just speak see. it out. Yeah. Speak it out and then it'll yeah. become that. Mm -hmm. So by I think that infinite possibility or, you know, uh, thinking of, of positive possibility thinking is that the mind will program itself and you will see possibilities you never saw before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we should have Lynn tell us, like, so what's going on in the brain, those neurons going back and forth? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. We always need Lynn on this for that explanation. That's good. I know, I know. Uh, and I know you've done a lot of study on that too, Lisa. Um, but I no, think she's way ahead of it. Mine is uh, remedial compared to her understanding. <laughs> but then we don't compare ourselves to others, right? <laughs> I just know reach out to somebody who knows more than me. And I, hence, here we all are. Um, it's just, I, and I, I do love, I love the, the, uh, the words of the positive possibilities the positive expectancy living in a way that's always looking for those new possibilities is when, again, when you're looking for them, you will find them because I believe they're totally out there. There is always, there is always another choice. And sometimes the, the choice or the possibility is how can I think about this differently? 
you know, that mm -hmm. because how we think determines the choices we make and the um, determines everything else, that next action that we're going to maybe take and just believing in your heart that God does, you know, God's got this, you know, even at the end of all this crazy stuff that's going on in the world, the bottom line is we know the end of the story. We know God's got it. We, we still have to live it out every day. But the point is we know that because he loves us and because he's told us that he's got this and things will be redeemed, whatever that looks like, because I don't have a clue, but I know he does. And that's all I need to know, is to know that he does. So, well, and, and the scriptures and give us a, a spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's a good way to put it. And in the scheme of things, really, what's really important? You know, our, yeah. our whining and our, oh, I don't, I can't have this or I can't have that or I want this or I want that. What's really important? What are we, what are we supposed to be doing here as believers? You know, not whiners, mm -hmm. not <laughs> winners, whiners. not whiners. You so. know, and you can't whine when you're being grateful also. That's another thing. Somebody said you can't be unhappy if you're grateful. And that's true. If you're grateful for what's going on, and, um, and it's not, and I know some of, because some of, some of y'all and all of us have had painful things in our lives um, and, and have had, you know, uh, serious illnesses. We've had death families. And it's not that we're being grateful, you know, because I think sometimes people misunderstand that. We're, uh, when you go through those times, it's not that necessarily you're grateful that you're having to go through it, but the great and the thankfulness comes from that you've got the Lord walking with you, that he's got it, that yeah. you're grateful that you're not having to take the journey by yourself. You're grateful that he has, he has answers for you. He has possibilities for you. And it's really, and I think being faithful is part of that being obedient, you know, being obedient right. and trusting just trusting that that he he has the best for you and sometimes okay. it's hard there are hard things that, that we go through on this earth for sure yeah he didn't didn't promise it was going to be a cakewalk so nope. <laughs> you no. know and, 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 well, and go ahead i was going to say and, and a lot of times uh when i'm whining um i it just so happens like i'll be whining and then something pops up um, I was whining the other day, as a matter of fact, to be transparent, I was whining and, um, I had, I jumped on LinkedIn and there was a uh, story about this gal with her little girl that, um, the, the, it's a little baby. She's got a brain tumor and I'm like, and I'm whining, you know, I mean, he, it's always, there's always somebody that can be in a, you know, more challenging, you know, it, it's, it's kind of like where's your priority and you're whining about stuff that doesn't really matter when it comes down to it. So, yeah. well, I, and I always imagine, you know, David and Goliath situation, <laughs> you know, he, he uh, brought the possibilities with it. I'm pretty sure that God's the one that finished the possibility because he thought that was so cute. Um, bringing a sling along with <laughs> to, to fight Goliath. Um, but but I think it's kind of a cute little example about the fact that like we bring what we can and we we prepare and we like try to make those possibilities open up and that, like I said God's the finisher you know he makes it a zinger yeah and the fact that David um, you know he outright told him how dare you come against the the army of the Lord you know he was just indignant about yeah I love it. Yeah you think you are you know i've got god on my side and you know they're all laughing their heads off <laughs> so yeah yeah and it's like okay and sometimes i think that's what we think lord i don't have you know i don't have anything to give or, or what can i give and i hear women say this and that's why i think that's why i'm on the mission i am is to help women to see just be who god created you to be just be the the best you and let god take you and do what what he wants you know, he, God can use all of us, um, and, and it, it's when we really believe that it changes lives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. I it is, yeah. um, so, so we are getting. To, when, uh -oh. I couldn't tell which one of y'all started it, but I couldn't hear. I, I couldn't. 
see who started the conversation. No, I just was saying we're getting near the top of our time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I, I love this. Um, and I'm not sure, again, I think this might be Vicki that did this. I try to be grateful for the lesson learned. Now I just pray every day. Dear Lord, you have control. And if uh, if you need to teach me a lesson, let me learn it sooner than later. Like, hello. <laughs> You know, why? Do you, do you ever hear yourself like, why, Lord, do I keep going through this same thing? Well, because, duh, you haven't learned the lesson yet. You know, it's like, I want to learn the lesson. I don't want to have to repeat the same old thing over and over and over. <laughs> there are just some of those, right? <laughs> so I love that. Oh, gosh, it's crazy. Well, everybody, thank you so much for being here. And thank you for uh, making your comments um, to make sure that I can go back and find the, I'll, I'll go into the three because we're streaming right now on the Facebook Fun Fearless the group and on my personal page and on the speaker Faith Talk page. Uh, so I guess on those individual pages, it says your name, but they're not coming all the way over here. And again, there is that link that when it sh shows the pop up window, um, I'm saying at the end of the next week that. Uh, that you can get permission for Facebook to show us who you are. Cause it's kind of nicer to know for sure who it is. Um, any last comments, Dr. Laura, as we wrap it up here? Um, you know, like just a summary of, you know, keep your focus on God and the possibilities with him are endless. Yeah. Beautiful. And Lisa. Be a possibility energizer, bunny. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Very good. It's like, oh, okay. Um, and really, you guys, um, everybody knows somebody that's positive. You know, I mean, if, if you don't know positive people, then you need to change your sphere of influence. Okay. If your friends mm -hmm. are all negative ninnies, whiners, then that's a really good sign that your first possibility is to go look for positive friends, yeah. which Hopefully it's why you're on here with us because you're always going to find positive energy on there. Um, but this may not be enough if you're in one of those negative times and, you know, people get there. I, I understand that. Um, but that's when it is crucial, crucial, crucial to reach out to somebody and or start reading, uh, go, read scripture, of course, but read books that put you in that positive mindset. Um, and, and I would make sure there's a lot of positive mindset out there that's not, um, it's positive, but it's not as helpful as Christian teachings are, I guess might be a way of saying that. Um, but reach out and find those people that are positive, find things to read and to watch. And if you're watching the news every day, then turn it off because, I mean, yes, we all need to be aware of what's going on, but that will take you down a negative zone. And basically it's going to tell you out there, the world, the out there, the airwaves are pretty much telling us to be fearful, to not focus on God. And to focus on all the negativity. So just turning off the TV and putting yourself in a place where you're where you're feeding your mind with positive energy, with godly things. Uh, you know, think on those. I can't list them all. You know, the, what's excellent and pure and all of those lovely and kind. When we think on those things, then the, that negativity can't be in there, and more possibilities come come to you. You can see those. So. All righty. Well, thank you again, everybody, for being here. Your names will go on the list for the drawing um, that we'll have at the end of June. And uh, remember, I'll finish up with our usual thing. Life is not a matter of chance. It is a matter of choice and possibility. So choose to go find those possibilities in your life and make it a fabulous <laughs> week. All right, everybody. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Yeah. Thank you.